Gary TV. I am your host, Gary Bay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see again, we've had a run, Mott. Guest City USA. It's becoming a hub. We need like, a couch. We do need we do have a couch. We haven't used the couch in a while. Sarah Lieb is in the house. She made the wonderful song that dominated my airwaves for weeks and weeks about <laughs> Wine Library TV. Mott, let's link that up. That's what you do. And uh, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Why don't you tell the Baniacs a little bit about yourself, why, why we're pimping your dot com up here, and, uh, and also tell them about the gig on Monday. All right, my that. name so is Sarah. Um, I love wine. I've only gotten into it recently. Like 28 minutes ago. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, I came all the way from Los Angeles. I'm a jazz singer. I live in Los Angeles. Um, I happen to be here for a gig. That's Monday, June 30th at Cornelia Street Cafe in New York. If you're in town, you should come. Mott, link it up. There we go. SarahLeave.com. I've dreamt my whole life. Okay, for the past year <laughs> of doing that. I got into wine just like a year ago. I found Gary, and all of a sudden, I just got really into it. I told everybody I know about it, and, uh, and that's surprising. really it. Not surprising, Mott. Yeah. What do you think? I put it on my website. SarahLieb.com. Mm -hmm. One more dot com mention, we're gonna have to kick you off the show for shamelessly plugging. <laughs> Sorry. You're worse than me on the book. All right, here's what we did. <laughs> Nobody's worse than me on the book. <laughs> You're right. He signed my book, by the way. Here's what we did we yapped, we hugged, we took some pictures, we talked about her palette, and we talked about expanding it. We went in a couple interesting directions. The middle two wines I have here are to expand her palette. The outsets are based on some things she said. One, she talked about how much she loved Kim Crawford's Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. I've been hearing a lot about this Walter Hansel Sauvignon Blanc from California. You pointed out very eloquently that I hate on Sauvignon Blanc from California. All the time. Which is true. So I'm excited about trying this wine. We're gonna do that. And then finally you talked a little bit about the blends, the Opus Ones, the Insignias. You know, you kind of mentioned that you were a little bit down on Insignia, weren't mm -hmm. that impressed. Um, Not for 200 bones. I understand. Forget about it. So we got the Arcturus here um, from Australe Terra, which is a very interesting wine that's caused a lot of buzz. Um, one of the highest repeat sale items on, in Wine Library, the retail store. I've been dying to kind of get my hands around it, so I figured this would be a very good time, a little segue action. So that's how we're gonna do it. We've got a Portuguese wine, because we all know what I feel about Portugal. By the way, we finally have a good action figure of Ric Flair, the nature boy. Woo! That's what he does. You know there's a song. About Ric Flair? No, it's a song called Nature Boy. Oh, I see. I got excited about Ric Flair. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll make one up if you want. <laughs> I know you will. Um, oh, but before we taste wine, huge announcement. We have another contest. And this one is massive and rad, just like the last one. So let me give you a little hint. Mott, link this up. For centuries, the best wines in the world were made in France. And in 1976... I just read an article that said California is going to produce wine that will rival the finest of the French. For sure. And they held a competition to prove it. I'm going to California to try and find some respectable competition. The world tends to think of us as a bunch of hicks taking on the French. Did I mention that the tasting was blind? I don't know. If the French lose, they might bring back the guillotine. Is there a spare in that trunk? Oh, yes. And a first aid box with a snake bite kit. It was the American spirit. Hey, can we get a barrel sample for this French wine snob? He doesn't think we make real wine here. Against the French tradition. People make some pretty good wine in this area. My definition of palatable might be slightly different from yours. They didn't have the history. Everything all right here? This Californian wine is cool. So good. What were you expecting, Thunderbird? They didn't have the culture. Hey, come on! Get the help! Oops. All they had... Cultivation of the vine is an art form. ...was a dream. Yeah! <laughs> Taste that! You'll tell your children about this wine! Oh, gee. That is some Chardonnay. If one of us wins, we all win, right? Amen. Good luck. Napa. I'm sorry, sir, but FAA rules only allow you to bring one bottle of wine in your travel bag. I can't have these wines jostled about in cargo. I'll take one, and so will my husband. No, I'll carry one for you, oh. sure. Here. 
This fall, discover the true story. Stop. That shocked the world. <laughs> Bottle shock. Why don't I like you? Because you think I'm an ass. And I'm not really, I'm just British and, well, you're not. Okay, so you can see that Bottle Shock, the movie, is coming out. It's coming out in August, um, early August. Another movie, it's about the Great Judgment of Paris in 1976. That's when California wine really hit its scene in America. Time Magazine wrote an article about this big tasting, and it kind of just took America by storm and really created the California wine industry in our, in our culture. So, something really cool. Vaniacs, you know I'm always working for you. I'm sending you to France. Got a little link up over here. Here's another contest. We need to, you to make a spoof of Wine Library TV. Mott, can you do me a favor and can you link up a couple of spoofs that we've had in the past? <laughs> There's some good ones out there, so. Uh, uh. Do you want three or two? Two is funny. <laughs> two, two is funny. So, I want you to make a spoof of Wine Library TV and we want you to email Chris at cmott at winelibrary.com. Mott, you're gonna have to link that up. I mean, you got a t-shirt now, you gotta link up more than ever. <laughs> um, Send in your videos. We're, Mott and I are gonna pick three finalists. We'll show them on Wine Library TV, then you'll vote on it. The contest expires. We will be, we will be making our decision on July 22nd. Ex uh, yes, July 22nd. And on July 23rd, the votes will come in and we will pick the winner. On the July 22nd show, you will have to come in and say video one, two, or three in the comments. We will tally them up and then we will have a winner. And then on July 26th, Saturday, July 26th, we will fly you to California to Chateau Montalena for the premiere of Bottle Shock with me, you and I, holding hands and enjoying the Lewis, movie. Like, Lip, yeah, Lip, oh. mm. holding hands. Lizzie's gonna beat my face. Holding hands, <laughs> watching the movie together in Napa. We'll also probably go and check a couple wineries out, at least one or two, maybe a little lunchy lunch. So hopefully you'll enter. I know there's a turdlibrary.com out there guy, which is hilarious. People have done some amazing things in the past. We will not allow you to regurgitate. Sorry, Tim <laughs> F. and some of the kids out there in Maryland, but I know you're gonna all step up. Please use vidler.com to put it on there because we like those guys, but you're more than welcome to use YouTube or Blip TV, Vimeo. We like a lot of people out there. I've heard a couple in my life, by the way. There's a group, uh, LA Winos. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Is, you know them? Mm -hmm. young, young Winos of yep. LA. Mm -hmm. So I went, to a, I went to one of their mm -hmm. uh, get togethers a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, and mm -hmm. this guy uh, had a really, Good really spoof. funny. Spoof. Yeah, you you gotta put tell that to on. Put it on I like to say that just for like the first twenty seconds, I've got a good. So do it. You could come. We could hold hands. You saw how we held hands. First she one. She doesn't know that my fiance is right back there behind yes, the camera. Yes, that's true. Sorry, Lizzie. Uh, Walter Hansel Sauvignon Blanc, two thousand and seven, eighty nine points. Jay Miller, sixteen U S bones. Let's see what this wine has. <laughs> pour you a little right there. Thank you. Oh. Just pour you a little. You held your, the hand holding was really good. All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's swirl it around. Let me, let me help you out here. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's give it a little bit of a, what do you think we should give this? Sniffy sniff. Good idea, good idea. Hmm. Yes, very nice aromatically off the top. It's kind of interesting on the back end, towards the end. What do you get on the nose here? Like, at first I thought, Oh, cat pee, and mm -hmm. then I was wrong. As mm -hmm. soon as I swirled it, it was like a little green apple or something. I do get a little green apple. It also gets a little stinky towards the back end, which is kind of neat. I Maybe that like was a... what I was thinking, cat pee. Yeah, a little like a stink bomb kind of thing going on. I kind of like it. But in a good way, in sort of a sweet, like fruity way. Yeah, like a stink bomb with sugar on top. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I get a little bit of green leaves. I definitely get a uh, Granny Smith apple core, no question on the nose. I also get star fruit. If you've not had star fruit, you really need to go out and find it. Go to Whole Foods, Wegmans, all those places. Find a, a little bit of star fruit, slice it up, and really smell that sucker because it comes through on a lot of wines and it's really obvious in I this. I feel you on that one. The yep. star fruit, yep. they, sometimes on plate, like platters, they slice yeah. it really thin mm -hmm. and you taste it and you're like, meh. You know, because it tastes, sure. it's a little like, it's tarty. not acidic, but yeah, tart. It's tarty. But I feel you. A little you. sweet tarty. Let's give this a whirl. Nice nose. I swallowed half of it. Don't worry. Very lychee fruit. I get a little bit of kiwi on the back on. You like the lychee move, right? I love it's all, it's anything lychee. It's lychee. I make a good lychee martini. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you feel the lychee-ness on this? I think so. Let me try it again. Mm -hmm. 
I like how you're mm -hmm. singing in the background. Yeah. Yeah, like the canned lychee, not the, uh, not the fresh. Have you had the fresh? Yes, I have. Bang. The uh, I like banging. That's a good word. Um, fourteen five alcohol. It's a little hot on the back end. I definitely, definitely get some heat on the back end, which is a little bit interesting. It lacks the acidity that I like in Sauvignon Blanc. You know what I want? I want the razor blade. I want it to cut my mm. tongue. It does not have that kind of acidic situation. Now that being said, it does have very nice weight. I like the fruit. It's pretty fresh. I like the pear skin. Break Ooh. it down, Sarah. I I feel like there's something almost not. <laughs> yeah. Can you be boxing in the background? I want to be like your, be your your hype artist. I feel like there's something like a little not Sauvignon Blanc-y about it, like a little almost like Riesling mm -hmm. or, or something. Maybe the that's minerality? the minerality. I don't know. It's like, well, let's bring it out in the open. Mm -hmm. I told you a long time ago that Rieslings and Gewürztraminers have Hello Kitty eraser smell. Yes, I remember that actually. And you were like, no, nah, I don't know. It's this. It's that. It's plastic. I was like, Pfft. that's because. You never. I should have brought a Hello Kitty eraser. I can't believe I didn't do it. That's a good call. Ah, well, I missed this one, but it has a little of that Hello Kitty eraser smell, and which is weird to me because it's Sauvignon Blanc. What's weird to me is that I always say things, and then people are like, "Yeah, I get that." I've got to be very honest with you. I was kind of totally dismissing what you were talking about just now, but I wasn't because when I tasted it again, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. You remember the whole fad of like the shaped erasers? This did, and like the white ones, like the white ones, right? Yeah. You're a little vindicated. I've got to admit, and I hate this. <laughs> this does taste like that kind of eraser. Do, do people understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying Hello Kitty erasers. Right, and I'm thinking of the Hulk Hogan eraser I had. It okay. was all in white, <laughs> and then I changed him to Macho Man because I liked him better, but I couldn't get a Macho Man one, so I like wrote it in pen. You know what I'm talking about? The one that with the characters and it was shaped out and they were made out of that white product. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking Sometimes about? Sometimes it was yeah. dyed, but it usually came from China, maybe Japan. Somewhere. Korea. Yep. And so I've got to say, I think you're right. What do you think of this wine? Uh, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Um, Not your favorite thing? Well, it's no Kim Crawford. Understood. But, I, I, you know, 16 bucks? Is that what it is? It's 16 bones. I think it's a little I drink expensive. It. I understand. You're a big baller. I'm not. So here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking that. This wine in the eight to twelve dollar range would make me say maybe. Mm -hmm. At sixteen bones, I think it's passed. I think it's an eighty-seven point Sauvignon Blanc at best on my palate. Everybody has their own. Um, I'm discovering more of mine. I've got Hello Kitty eraser in my mouth right now, for example. So, um, a really okay effort. Definitely not up to the hype of my inner wine nerds in California that have been telling me this wine rocks the face off. I don't know what face you're rocking off, but it's not mine. Let's move on. Understood. But like, is this the kind of thing we were we were before the show talking about? Like, can I can I buy this? Can I afford? He said I'm a baller, but I'm not really. Okay. Can I afford to buy this? Buy this, and 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 can I lay it down? Um, you can I'm lay it. No, no, I don't think you can lay it down really in any kind of shape or form. Let's rinse here. Um, I just don't see it being a real play in any shape or form. All right, let's move on. We're going to Portugal. and We're going to Douro, uh, the first DOC in Portugal, um, making some of the most interesting wines. This wine is. Um, made from uh, Aragones, which is also known as Tempranillo in Spain, um, and it's also blended with Alicante Boucher. Uh, two grape varietals that um, are very interesting and uh, doing extremely well in Portugal at this time. 15 bones, 90 points wine enthusiast, 13.5 alcohol content, uh, a pricey wine in the scheme of um, in the scheme of Portugal, uh, and I'm talking about the Calabrega, uh, Doro, 2004. Let's give it a whirl. Snippy, snippy. Yeah. yeah. Woody. Really? No, not you? Not for me, not super woody. Um, I get a little bit more like a, of a grape Kool-Aid thing going on. Mm. And some very ripe raspberries. I get the raspberry jam quite a bit on the nose. But it's a tight nose a little bit, so I mean... I don't feel like Kool-Aid, but the raspberry... Uh, yeah, the raspberry okay. is the dominate thing, no question. Um, but you know, I'm sure you haven't put out powdered Kool-Aid on your kitchen counter. And snorted it? Is that, <laughs> Probably is that not. a chicken puck mark right there? Yes. I'm into those. Oh, oh anyway. you said once you were into those. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, Ellie's laughing back there. I understand. Anyway, very bright fruit. I think it's it's a solid nose. I kind of like the violet thing going on. Do you get some of the floral components on the nose? I think this is really coming through interestingly. Enough. 
I like this. Yeah, I see the floor. Do you like this nose? This is very different from what you're accustomed to. It, it, I mean, not have only you had that, Portuguese red wine yet? Not if it's not a port. Understood? Yeah. This reminds me of like, it's like oh. sort of the nose of like a, f like. Ma, don't get wild here. <laughs> Moved in his chair, awesome. just yeah. in case you. Leave. Matt's gonna edit no, that out anyway. No, he's not. We don't edit. And also, don't don't tell them. It's better to like do it that way. <laughs> I think it's a T-shirt, and he feels he can do anything up in this place. <laughs> All right, let's give this a whirl. Okay. I really am excited about this nose to get back on course. I really do get like a black licorice reduction sauce, uh, raspberries, and definitely like powdered Kool-Aid grape action going through the nose. The aromatics are interesting, very focused, not really oaky or woody, but you did get it, so I'm trying to figure out what maybe made you think that. I don't know, I don't feel it, but it's there. Maybe a little eucalyptus uh, thing going on as well. It, it, you get actually, a little bit that's of that? the thing that I might I, be thinking I think woody. so too. Do you, do you smell it, like on the undertone, a little licorice? Yeah, it's like Do you get the you, licorice, eucalyptus kind of thing going on? I get the licorice, and I think I get the eucalyptus. It's like when you smell Minty. a fancy Cabernet, like right. Gary let me taste a really fancy Cabernet before the show, mm -hmm. um, and there's this like, th there's that smell, which is funny because sure. there's no Cabernet. I understand. Yeah, right? No, there is not. Let's give it a whirl. Mm. You didn't know what the wristband was for, huh? I do that, but now I think you've maybe done it a little too many times. Yeah. Sort of sour on the finish. Not in a bad way. You like this? Tell the truth. You don't. Know, too light for you. Because it's a medium body play and you're into the cabs and the big wine, so. I'm into the Willy Wonka thing where you're like, oh, it tastes like salad. Oh, it tastes like roast. Now it tastes like blueberry pie. Right. And I don't feel like there's like a million things going on here. Yeah. I understand. It's not that complex. Understood. Do you get the dark chocolate? Like real dark chocolate, dark chocolate with a high cocoa count. Like 72%. Like cacao count. Like big cacao count. Scharfenberger. Do, 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 do you get it? No. Okay, what do you get? Mm. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Maybe a little of that Scharfenberger. Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Now, how about the coconut? I love coconut. I love coconut I more cook than you. Coconut, no, no, no. I cook coconut curries. Thai coconut curries. I eat coconut all the time. 365 days a year. You win. But next time you're in LA, eat one of my curries. How okay, about fine. That? Deal. Deal. All right. Do you eat mounds? I like mounds. Me too. Wait, which are the one? Mounds are better than the almond joy. Yes. Because you don't want you don't want the yum interrupted by you answered the crunch. The you answered the question yeah. correctly. We can move on. All right. I get a little subtle coconut. I get very dark chocolate. I get. Absolutely, positively, a heavy dose of black raspberry jam on the mid palate. It's a medium body play with a lot of interesting herbal tea like components on the back end. Sip it again, try to catch that because that's the fun fun. The fun fun of this wine is this whole interesting little herbal tea, black tea kind of thing going on on the back end, mixed with some of those other interesting plays in the beginning. I like the medium body aspect. I disagree with my lovely co-host and I do think it's a complex wine. I think a lot of times, and this is something we're gonna pound, we're gonna pound this home. A lot of times people misconceive, don't think properly about what a complex wine is in my opinion, I could be wrong, because they feel it has to be very weight driven and then you get, I, I understand what those big fruit bombs do. They give you some of the secondary, the Willy Wonka action. But I think a lot of lighter wines for example, Burgundian Pinot Noir can get very complex and I'm finding this wine has a lot of dimension to it. It's very subtle and I understand, plus it's young and tight. So it might not be, maybe, you know, you've been drinking wine for a year, as a younger palate, I can see maybe it not being as easily detected. I'm not putting you down, as a matter of fact, okay, you're much cooler than me, you found the eraser in Hello Kitty. That being said, there's a lot going on, I'm serious about that, you really nailed that. That was very Thank impressive. Very I'm not much. kidding, by the way. The thing is, now that I'm here, I sort of understand Gary's brilliance. Yes, I'm a big fan, but, brilliance. but, totally. It, it, he said the coconut. Matt, rewind that a couple. Can we like <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> brilliant, 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 brilliance? Brilliance. Go ahead. Look at the brilliance. So, like, you taste. It's not the kind of thing. Like sometimes I tell my fiance, getting married August thirty first, best person on the earth. Thank earth. you. Um, what? Uh, sorry. Sometimes. 
Like, you, you say to somebody, oh, taste the lemon, it's so zingy. And then you taste it, and you're like, oh, lemon. And it's in your head. But this no thing, doubt. you said the chocolate, okay, chocolate. Then you said the coconut, and the coconut is like, it's so deeply in there. Like, you just have to look for it. And my, I, I can tell when I taste it, my palate's not that sophisticated. And that's okay, I'm not putting myself down. But what the cool thing is, is now that you said that, if I look hard, it's like one of those puzzles where you have to, like, cross your eyes and see it. I hate those things, right? They're like, what do you see? I'm like... Nothing. A dude? They're like, no, a bird. I'm like, come on, I messed up again. <laughs> I never saw the I thing. I used to things. cross my I, eyes and sit there for hours. Either. But, like, but you get it here. But what was good about me is I sold the puzzle then. Like, to, that's what I was good at. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's here, but who wants it for four bucks? Three? You got it. That was my <laughs> skill. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's really an interesting wine. I like this wine a lot. I mean, you know, and... You know, I really wish that some people sat in on a seminar that I did with Portuguese wines the other day where I panned 85% of the wines. I mean, it was like garbage, terrible. So far, Portugal's been having a very nice run on the Thunder show, so I don't want people to think I'm so hometown. I mean, I ain't got no emotional attachment to Portugal whatsoever. That being said, I find the wines interesting. I think they're value-driven, and I think they're a lot more complex than people realize. I think these grapes, like Aragones, which is also known again as Tempranillo in, in Portugal, uh, Alagante Boucher, which used to have a big play in California in the 70s, has totally come out of fashion. They do very well in this part of the world. I think there's a lot of movement for better quality. And I, I like this wine. To me, this is a food wine. It's not going to be over the top oak monster. It's not going to be ah. Right. You know, it's not going to be that. Scary. It's going to be sorry. It's not going to be that. It's going to be a lot more pleasant, a lot more elegant, and there's a lot of foods you can drink this with. Now, if I put this away because I talked to you about like I'm getting married, do I want to buy a case of something? What do I want to buy? If I put this away, say five years from now, what would it taste like? Because you, you said it was sort of close. Is it going to open up? I think this is a three to five year play and it would okay. not be my first recommendation for something to put away. I actually think this is a red wine that you can drink with fish. Mm. And that, that's what I'm probably thinking about right now. It's a little warmer. We're in that time of year right now. God, this is opening up more. I mean, I'm really liking this wine. I'm like gonna... maybe the fish coconut, cur Jamaican curry coconut rundown that I made like three weeks ago? Yes, like that exact thing. I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I think the wine enthusiast absolutely hit it out of the park. I think for 15 bones, it's an absolute play. And I'm really, really impressed with this wine. I think it brings a lot of thunder to my palate, which I appreciate. I wanna thank it. Let's move on. Thank you. So did, did that wine win you over a little bit? Not still, listen, it's your palate. Like, like, medium, par of. There's Was it too thing light? In, it... In, 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 in Hebrew, mm -hmm. par of, it means like it's not mm -hmm. milk, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not meat, yep. parv, it's like in the middle. Right. It's like parv. Understood. It's like it's okay. Like Medium. I use the term half pregnant. <laughs> totally. You know, same thing. Doesn't exist. Right. But But it's there. But still, yeah. This was the first question I asked you. Have you ever had a shot of the pop? That's said no. Pop. And that's why I'm really excited about this. Plus I've been dying to figure out how to get this on the show. Everybody's been talking about it. It's a $26 Shatnip the Pop that Parker scored 90 to 93 mm -hmm. points. So on paper, it looks like a really interesting play. Alain Corsia, uh, this is the creme de la creme, Shatnif the Pop 2006, so I love the little play on the words, the, the score is huge, the price is right with a crap ass euro dollar conversion, I mean this is fair city, and uh, I'm excited about trying this wine, I hope you are too, let's give it a great color too. I can buy four of these if I like it. This could be your play, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Cause that's what we do on the Thunder Show. I like your spinning, very good. Thank you. What's you're harder? Trying, with, with, well, with what's the... going on here? You're trying to, you're trying to. I, she was going stride for stride there. Let's go in the air now. Let's go in the air. Come on. <laughs> I see. I feel I'm not good at that. Uh, I've seen see, you do it on the television. See, I've got you, you now. I've got you now. Well, you. I've got it. you now. Come on. What's going on? Well, what? Step up. <laughs> what's going on? That's there hey, you go. That's pretty I feel good. I like to spill some. There you go. All right. Let's give a sniffy sniff. You like this? It smells, smells good. good, doesn't it? <laughs> good. Is this the kind of thing you'd be like, raise that? Hold on, there's something, oops, there's something interesting. Uh, you know, no, this is something that I would call custard, like a, like a great French custard with some raspberries on top and then throw like, like an interesting like celery stick and like asparagus. There's a heavily dosed in like, in, um, in custardy kind of like the middle of a creme brulee or a creme brulee, mm. like, you know what I mean? Like that whole kind of thing with like a cup, you know how the creme brulee comes out and they put like two little nice raspberries uh -huh, on top right. and a mint? Take out the mint, replace that with an asparagus and a piece of celery and that's what this smells like to me. You know what, now I feel you. I just read this book, I forget what it was, it came out in 2000, I've got it at home, I meant to bring it, I forgot. And it said, don't drink wine with asparagus, it's got some weird right. reaction, sure. true? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely, you know, a lot of people don't like to pair it. I'm the kind of person, you know, I eat dirt on national television, so I'm not really scared <laughs> of anything or any pairing, um, but I understand why it's, it's, 
There's also yeah, smell the, Do you get the chalkiness? I get the chalkiness and now minty. Kind it's of? like not before. It's a little. There's a tiny little bit of funk. There is a little funk. I agree. And it's more like auto mechanic funk. Mm. You know, it smells like you know your 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 uncle who's like. 53, he's been the mechanics his whole life, you know, he, there's no way he can clean his right. hands r realistically. It's so in there, Ma. You know what I'm talking about, it's like just become part of his life. You know, it's, it's smell a little bit of that. Mm. Like his hands, with that custard cream right there. I'm not sure I smell the custard, I gotta go for it again. It's the creaminess that you find on the secondary note. I like, feel the creaminess. So the I first just... thing that's hitting you is that freshness, that crispness kind of, uh -huh. that smell, and then think about right after that. Now I just want some custard. I like yeah, the custard's delicious, right? Just, oh. all right, let's give, it, let's give it a whirl. We've been yapping about this right. long enough. Hold on. That was good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good enough to drink. What do you think? Delicious. Yeah, this is good. A little tannic, like like more more so than I would. You've been have asking about the five to ten year plan. Mm -hmm. Here's your wine. This wine easily let uh -huh. that back end tannins uh -huh. represent the situation where you know that this wine will last for another 5, 10, 12, 16 years. I think the fruit is very bright. Mm -hmm. That raspberry comes through way, way, way on the on the taste. Crazy on the yeah. Yeah, no question. On the palate, you know, what I picked up on the nose is coming through in spades. Throw up a spades. Sorry. Anyway, um, very elegant, that last very out loud I love it. coming from the audience. Very elegant, good complexity, well made, perfect structure, a great perfect blueprint example of what Shatton of the Pop is. Um, I like this wine. I'm feeling the strawberries on the back end. I, as I'm yapping, the finish, the tail end finish, is dominated by subtle strawberries. Not in your face strawberries. I'm talking about subtle strawberries, like mod, subtle. You know, and so really, really elegant palette, feel, good expression, well construed, very well made, good winemaking in this wine. I can feel it. I almost feel like the fruit source is okay, but the winemaking in the it's put together in a blend was done. I mean, this is a nice wine to me. Now, this is mostly Syrah, Shat Nafta Pops? Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't, it doesn't have that, like, ooh, I'm so big, I'm gonna throw pepper it be, at it can be very, No, no, it could be very heavy Grenache. Okay. And, and then and this is, no doubt. I mean, that's where you get that strawberry kind of thing on mm -hmm. the tail end. Um, Mouvettes and so, mm -hmm. you can get some different grape varietals in here, obviously, the 13 grapes allowed in Shat Nafta Pop. Um, so, you know what, Mott, let's link up one of the first Shat Nafta Pop shows where I really broke down the knowledge. So, Mott, All right, let's move on. Um, I'm going My to mouth agree. Is getting a little puckery on this because it's a dry wine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to agree with Parker. I think he's in the range. I'm going to go 90 points as well. I mean, I, I like it. I I'm going to go 90 plus. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm really trying to debate in my mind right now. Would uh, by the way, this is going to be the wine she likes the best. Um, I'm, I'm just debating whether I like the Portuguese wine more or the Chateau de Pop. They're different for different reasons. They're both interesting. <laughs> Did I just say they're different for different reasons? I like that. Um, Interesting wines, both very well made and both fair priced considering the Euro dollar conversion. And uh, I like it, I'm gonna go 90 plus on it and I'm feeling it and let's move on. Uh, the Astrale e Terra Architurs 2002 um, Napa blend. This wine rolls in at 76% Cabernet Sauvignon, 13% Merlot, 8% Cab Franc. You're really under the gun when you pronounce these things. And 3% Petit Verdot. We love that, the PV. That's right. Bring it. Good. Let me give this. I'll right. give you a big. Didn't we do it? Didn't we? I don't know. We did, huh? <laughs> See, I just want to do it again. I want to break it down. Just to for like you. kill me. This just is, to, just to just hurt so, me just a little. I think this is going to be big for you. Um, I think you're going to like it. Oh, baby. I can tell already. I'm going to like it. See? 30 bones, 93 points, wine enthusiast. So, um,. Let's see what's going on here. Um, obviously, very nice color. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. It's got all that fruit. This is that Willy Wonka stuff you were talking yeah, about before. Yeah, Because you're going to have a lot in these kind of big wines. This has got a very nice nose. It's got a lot of fruit. I mean, this is a... Fruit bomb. And I think a lot of people are going to like this style. And what I like is not over oak so far on the nose. Which I appreciate because the oak monster scares the living crap out of me. <laughs> and so, big fruit, big raspberries, big, bla big, big blackberries. I mean, just a lot of plum, strawberries, cherries. Nobody's being cherries left out. Like, Nobody's yeah. going to be left out. Wow, very, very interesting. Let's give it a whirl. How about the 
greenness in there. That caught you off guard. It caught me off guard. Did you feel that in mid palate? Like, like mint covered green peppers? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Mm, delicious. Um, I guess I'm not feeling the mint so much. It, there is something green about it. Like This is mint city USN. This is mint. What's this mint? is absolutely mint. No, don't listen to a word she says. There's an obnoxious amount of mint. A little hint of eucalyptus again as well. Mm -hmm. Very medicine-y, you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. Little grasshopper, you know, the grasshopper, chocolate covered mint thingies, grasshoppers. Ma, you ate those suckers, right? Keebler grasshoppers. I used to get like throw up on those things. I feel the eucalyptus. I agree. I mean, a lot of cherry a lot, but this really took an interesting turn on the mid palate. Got very medicine-y. Honestly, I feel like I feel like I'm healthier uh, right Not now. Not like grape dimetap, but like like <laughs> even more like menthol-y or something. No question. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Menthol-y mint. <laughs> Hello Kitty. Um, you know, so really interesting wine. Actually, if you're a Heights Napa Valley Cab fan, this is a wine for you. All you Heights heads, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This wine will rock your face off with exactly the flavor profile that you adore about that wine. It actually does in a weird way remind me of some of the Martha's Vineyard cabs that roll in at about 150 bones deep. So, a nice little one fit the price mm, play delicious. for people that love this style. Again, intense fruit, lots of blackberries. I get like a fruit roll up kind of thing going on, little jam, but you can't get away from this mistaken minty fresh, like what junior mint kind of thing going on in the mid palate that I get very heavy. It doesn't seem like you get it as heavy as I do. No, but I get that, I get that eucalyptus -y minty thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I think junior mint and I'm like, ah, junior mint. But I was telling you before the show mm -hmm. that I tasted one of those two hundred dollar bottles mm -hmm. that my uh, awesome manager opened up for me mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and and Paul M, thank you, big ups. Uh, it, and I was like, wow, this is good. Would I pay two hundred bones for it? Absolutely not. How about thirty bones this, for this? Absolutely. Yeah, I, this, this is the kind of wine. thing that I feel like people like. Why do they waste their money on those other things? Get a case of this, and Instead you're drinking it for two, how long? Sure. I mean, this is a, this is an eight to fifteen year play. You know, this is a really good wine. I mean, this was a really good show. I, you know, we haven't gotten three for four for me, Mott, ever. I mean, four times. <laughs> this is a good show. I'm gonna go 90 points on this as well. I mean, they all fall in the same range for me for many different reasons. Three totally different wines. The Portuguese wines being half the price of the other two makes it obviously the one most interesting for me. But it's a time and place wine. There's a lot of times I would not pull out the Portuguese wines, let's say November, December, where I would have to pull out one of these two. So it's really a time and place. This is why scores are so stupid, but I will continue to score because I like <laughs> it. I'm sorry, I know all the people are like, why don't you, I like it, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Um, big shout out to a couple things. Let's, we linked up your show on Monday. Uh, so have a good weekend and come visit her on Monday, all Thank New York Maniacs. Bring your wristbands and t-shirts, she'll feel pumped. It'll be awesome. I want to give a happy belated birthday to Chris Henslin. Uh, big happy birthday to him. We talked about the bottle shot contest, right, Mott? We linked that up. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to be in, uh, next Wednesday, I'm going to be at Powell's in Oregon, uh, at the Beaverton, Oregon, outside of Portland. So for a book signing, Mott, can we link up the book tour? I appreciate it. We gave you a lot today. Sorry, man. Um, question of the day. You putting it on me? Of course. You know how we roll here. Yeah, baby. What is this your favorite wine? Don't, don't, don't like say I don't know. Don't feel pressure here. If you like Boons, say Boons. So what like is your Opus all time one, favorite wine? Yeah. Uh, just like what could you drink every day? You love it. Opus One. Say Opus One. Boons Farm. Say Blue Boons colored, Farm. green colored. You want to barf? Fine. Boone's Farm. Cisco. What's Cisco? You, with a little bit of me, Google it. We're changing the wine world. Whether they like it, thanks for being here, or, or not. not.